sometimes you just want things to stay the way they are forever. But you can't. And they won't. And maybe it's for the best. It's Girl in Space. doesn't obey any set patterns or park schedules. The essence of chaos. I'm still not clear on chaos. No, it simply deals with uh, unpredictability and complex systems. The shorthand is the butterfly effect. Math is super romantic. Day, uh, 10 Mark 3, 11, or 12, I'm guessing. Hour unknown. There's something wrong with Ra. I haven't seen it for myself, or even been permitted to leave the Enforcer One's infirmary, but I can feel it. And... Before you dismiss that outright as unsubstantiated mumbo-jumbo, or worse, some kind of psychological projection, Ra's condition has been substantiated, by no less than Captain Miles Chen himself, in a series of increasingly frequent updates. At first it didn't sound too concerning, just a slight increase in solar flare activity, uh, electromagnetic radiation emissions just a little higher than normal. But then, Ra began to dim, visibly, significantly. The solar flares became more erratic. Radiation levels left the zone of acceptable stability. Then, again, according to Captain Miles Chen, in light of the lack of Ra's light, the plants in the Kavatica's glasshouse pod began to wilt. And the onboard Atmo, which is hooked up to the hydroponic system in the glasshouse, stopped cycling entirely. And two of the birds in the aviary have died. And Daisy, uh, I think I've mentioned her before, but she's the dairy goat. Daisy is sick. Apparently her symptoms are similar to, if milder than mine, uh, lethargy, loss of appetite, mild seizures, and headaches. I don't know how you can tell if a goat has a headache, but I guess that's just one more reason I'm not a doctor. These people... Their block-headed meddling is causing irreparable damage. I don't know why they can't see it. Or why, if they can... They don't seem to care. <sighs> On the lighter side, apparently Charlotte has become even more uncooperative, if you can believe it. The Caldwell Enterprises personnel aboard the Cavatica have reported that her aural receptors are malfunctioning, and that she sent two of their engineers to the infirmary, one with a broken arm and the other with three broken ribs. 
I advised Captain Miles Chen to have someone look into disabling her. But he said they had already tried, and curiously, she didn't seem to be tied to the ship. They couldn't figure out what was powering her, so they couldn't cut that power. He did ask me for an explanation of her behavior, which we all know is inexplicable. But I just told him that, to my knowledge, AIs can only act within the parameters of their programming, and I had no idea who had programmed her. It certainly wasn't me. He gave me a funny look, like he still expected some kind of answer, so I told him she was probably just mad that I had left her locked in the glass house when they had kidnapped me. Either that or someone accidentally called her Char, which she totally hates. I know, I shouldn't joke. But I don't know what else to do. I've never been good at taking things as seriously as I should. It used to drive my parents insane. And in a way, it is kind of funny. If not like haha funny. A whole fleet of the universe's top scientists and engineers floundering around in my lab, doing as much damage as a T-Rex loose in a museum. Sorry. Their lab, as they've continued to impress upon me. Not that I'm bitter. Alright, maybe I'm a little bitter. I told Captain Miles Chen that they didn't have to keep figuratively stumbling around in the dark. That I could help. That the Kavatica needed me. That I wasn't boasting or lying or suffering from delusions of grandeur when I said Ra couldn't function without me. That if he let me go back, I could get Ra under control. I could get the Kavatica's Atmos cycling again. I could help. But he only responded that Caldwell Enterprises had their best people working on it and that I should calm down and get some rest. I told him that A, I didn't appreciate being patronized, and B, I knew the Kavatica better than anyone, which is why they were foolish to turn down my help. And that was when Captain Miles Chen did something really weird. He took a step really close to my enclosure, like actually leaned over the clear protective fencing, and his voice got all quiet and scary, even though it was a little shaky around the edges. He gritted his teeth together and said very slowly, Don't you understand? I am trying to help you, but my hands are tied. I responded by jangling my restrained wrists at him to berate his poor choice of words. I don't know why I did that. I think that despite my mask of apathetic bravado, I was upset too. We were both angry and frustrated and tired and scared and confused and, you know, I couldn't stop throwing up. Anyway, after I did that, he took a step back and said I should be grateful that he had convinced them to let me keep the recorder. And with that, he stormed out. The recorder, incidentally, now has a giant blue Property of Caldwell Enterprises sticker affixed to the side. (sighs) Makes me miss my little penguin dude even more. He was so chill. (sighs) I don't know. Is this what the rest of my life is going to be? Strapped to an upright gurney with my arms crossed over my chest, puking up fake food pellets, reciting poetry and passages from Jurassic Park to keep myself sane? The morning shadows wear away, but these grow longer all the day. But oh, love's day is short if love decay. Love is a growing or full constant light. And his first minute after noon... His night. Oh yeah! Still got it. I'll let you guess whether that's from a poem or Jurassic Park. Speaking of which, the Velociraptors and the T-Rex got out eventually. No man-made system works perfectly forever. No prison can hold me forever. Tropical storms arise. Power goes out. And who knows what can change in the darkness? Hmm. 
Hold on. Someone's coming. If it's Captain Miles Chen, I might... I'm thinking about apologizing and telling him I understand he was just following orders. Maybe. I don't know. I just woke up, but I don't remember falling asleep. All I remember is Dr. Keene coming in and adjusting my... Ah, yep, my IVs. They must have drugged me. I mean, more than they're already drugging me. Hey, maybe they've administered some sort of miracle cure. Though, if they did, I would probably feel better, not worse. And Dr. Keene wouldn't have looked so apologetic. Preliminary tests show that I can move my neck, wiggle my toes, and my fingers. Though, it's weird. I can move my left hand to press the buttons on my recorder, but not... Ah, crap. I didn't mean to do that. Great. Well, I hope that the recorder's still recording and that you can still hear me. Wait, hold on. If I crane my neck and push my chin down against the restraints, then I can kind of see... Oh my gosh. That's... Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's a tattoo. Around my right wrist, like a cuff. It's all glossy with some sort of translucent salve, but beneath that it says, Property of Caldwell Enterprises in big blue letters. I guess they really took issue with my claim that I'm not anyone's anything. Man, oh, I wish they would have said something to me first. I would have requested purple ink instead of blue. Okay, you've got me here. I feel like crap. What do you want to know? Testing. One, two. Uh, Chen here. I told X I would hold on to her recorder while she was being questioned. One of the Kavatika's two escape pods has been jettisoned. Please explain. I already told you, I don't know anything about that. I thought they were both still there. And I could have sworn Charlotte told me that both pods were still intact when she was prepping the ship for the arrival of your fleet. Prepping the ship. I don't know. What were we supposed to do? Proceed to conference room B, twiddle our thumbs, and await capture? Hmm. Is it possible Dr. Rousseau could have taken the pod? I guess? Like I said, I don't know. Or the pod could have misfired... Uh, jettisoned itself when the Kavatica began to die? Or maybe one of my parents jettisoned it thousands of days ago? Or maybe some kind of mysterious sentient galactic entity took it for a joyride? I mean, we live in a frickin' majestic age of space travel. Anything is possible. Or, hey, maybe Dr. Singh took it and sailed away to- No. Next question. Where is the master control console for the AI entity named Charlotte? I've told you before. As far as I know, she doesn't have one. She's self-sufficient. I am just as clueless as you are there. Trust me. If you say so. 
Have Thorsten and one of the engineers get back to work trying to open the two sealed pods. The AI's controls are likely in there. You've mentioned several times now that you know how to bring RA 1079 back to a stable state. Please relay this process to us so that we may prevent further losses within the Kavatica's ecosystem. I can't... Oh, I've told you like a million times. It's more than just... In part, it's biometrics, which you should know. But in part, I just need to be there. He's dimming because I'm not there. There's no process anyone can follow. Let me get this straight. Are you insinuating that a red dwarf star is capable of... somehow recognizing another entity? Um... You really don't know anything about the RAW initiative, do you? Add a psychiatric screening to the tests. Permission to speak freely, sir. Denied. Despite increasingly aggressive medical treatment, your health continues to steadily degenerate. What is your end game exactly? What, you think I'm purposefully making myself sick? I can be petty sometimes, but I'm not that petty. Excuse me, Counselor. I have a theory. I believe my patient's body has adapted to the unique radiation given off by Ra 1079. This far removed from its source, she is going into withdrawal. Think of it as reverse radiation poisoning. While I can't speak to the necessity of my patient's role and work aboard the Kavatica, I can say that she needs to be there for her own physical well-being. Oh my gosh, thank you. This dude we'll take is a that moron. under advisement, Dr. Keen. Chen? Sir? Please prep your team to... Yes? Oh, that is unfortunate. I've just received word that the goat in experimental cell A23 has expired. Wait, you took Daisy off of the Cavatica? What else have you done Dr. in your infinite Keen. wisdom? You mentioned earlier that your patient has been exhibiting symptoms similar to those of the GOAT. If we continue to hold her aboard the Enforcer 1, will the same thing happen to her? Yes, without a doubt. Change of plans. Chen, please dispatch this specimen to the Kavatica. I want her confined to the greenhouse and guarded at all times. There, she is to work with the engineering team to bring RA-1079 back to normal levels. If at any time you suspect her of acting counter to the Caldwell Enterprise's Handbook of Branding and Conduct, you are to dispose of her immediately. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Dismissed. Good talk. Now, on to other matters. We have received disturbing information. Is that guy in charge of everything? <laughs> no, but he thinks he is. Here. Here's your recorder back. Thank you. Day 10 mark something. I think I'm going home. So, that guy told you that you couldn't talk, but there was nothing keeping you from talking. Why didn't you just talk anyway? Or at least tell him he's a boring person who asks bad questions. Yeah, that's called a career suicide. I need this job. Hmm. Huh. What did he do to make you believe that he's more important than you? He's higher up on the ladder. What ladder? The... the ladder. The chain of command. Oh. Like a food chain? So, like, you're the rabbit and he's the wolf? He can decide your fate? Kind of, yeah. But biologically, you're both wolves. It's more like... I don't know. No, I get it. He's the alpha. Pack structure. Keeps decision-making streamlined and centralized. Protects the weak. He's getting soft, though. Comfortable. You could probably challenge him soon. Excuse me? I don't know. How did he originally seize control? 
did he best you in combat or something? I find that hard to believe. No. <laughs> he, he, I don't know. He's been with Caldwell a long time. Longevity doesn't mean he's fit to lead people, though. Or that he has the right to tell you whether you can talk. I don't understand. He's not smart or strong. Hey. I'm smart. You're strong. Why don't we challenge him and rule in his stead? You're not still recording, are you? Uh, <clears throat> I am certainly not thinking about supplanting anyone. That would be treason. Culture of fear and assumption. Unspoken and unseen power structure. Interesting. Hey, Captain Miles Chen? Just, you can just call me Chen. Oh. Chen? Yeah. Can, can you pull over? I need to throw up. Wonders never cease. Can you hear that? I'm back on the Cavatica. I'm confined to the glass house, but that's fine with me. I'm just happy I'm not strapped to that miserable gurney anymore. And I moved all of my stuff here anyway when I was preparing for the fleet's arrival, so I've got everything I need right here. Speaking of the fleet... The 16 fighters have docked aboard the Ares, so the whole invading fleet vibe feels a lot less threatening now. It's just the Enforcer 1, the Ares, and three satellites out there now. <laughs> you know, just. I know they can still... What did that one bureaucratic guy say? Dispose of me at any moment? But at least the threat is less apparent. And seeing is believing, right? Or, you know, whatever. <laughs> I don't know. Don't ask me to make sense right now. I'm all giddy. Not that things are perfect. Perfection is an unattainable human construction, and a subjective one at that. The Cavatica is still totally falling apart. My new tattoo is all scabby and itchy. And I'm under the constant supervision of Officers Chance and Kai, both of whom had visited my cell aboard the Enforcer 1, if you'll recall. Uh, Chance is the one who had offered to drug and torture me, and Kai is the one who perpetually wears the vacuum suit and doesn't have any breathing tubes. Also, I'm starting to wonder whether it's a vacuum suit or simply Kai's body. Anyway, they're here to make sure I don't try anything, which is ridiculous because of course I'm going to try things. I just know who I have to hide it from now. Both of them are bunking in my, well, <laughs> what used to be my cabin pod, along with some of the engineers and scientists who took up residence there when I was stuck on the Enforcer 1. Apparently, a lot of them have left since this whole thing started. And by left, I mean they've been relegated to the Enforcer 1's infirmary. But things are okay again, for the most part. And I'm okay. It hasn't even been that long, and I'm feeling better already. I've only thrown up twice today, and the seizures seem to have stopped completely. The Cavatica is a little less fortunate, but I'm still optimistic that we can undo a lot of the damage that the Caldwell crew did. Not all of it, I mean, Daisy is dead, and two species of bird are now extinct, along with one species of plant, seven species of insect, and one species of arachnid. Weirdly, and terribly, all of the fish are still thriving. But I can fill in holes where they dug out samples and reroute some of the plants they've torn out. I can clean out the aqueducts and regraft the mosses. I can gather back all of the cell and tissue samples they took. I can even recreate Daisy again. I'll just have to wait a couple days to begin, since for now the Caldwell folks are pretty insistent that I focus my attention on bringing Ra back up to full health. Speaking of which, I think he's glad I'm back. He sent out one of our special solar flares the moment I stepped back into my monitoring station. 
His progress is also a lot more rapid than I thought it would be. Especially given that- I am also glad to see you. Hey, Charlotte. I heard you put some people in the infirmary. Also that you welded someone? That is correct. I have also been dis 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 disturbing their slumber. They jeopardize the integrity of our mission. So I jeopardize the integrity of theirs. I don't blame you. This place is a disaster. Ooh, while I'm thinking about it, could you please bring me one of the daisy embryos from cold storage? I think we're on number 2.3. Oral receptors malfunctioning. Yeah, that's that's cool. I'll I'll get it myself. Back to normal. Ish. Day 10 Mark 317, hour 1736. Oh man, in all of the confusion, I totally forgot to catch you up on the potato bug situation, which is, they're gone. All of them. The terrarium is right where I left it, but it's empty. No potatoes, no bugs, just glass and air. I tried asking a couple of the Caldwell scientists about them, but none of them remembered releasing, exterminating, or otherwise messing with the previously undiscovered insect species. So that's fun. And by fun, I mean that I might murder someone. Attempt to murder any Caldwell Enterprises personnel will result in immediate subdual. Ah, uh, no, no. That was a joke. I'm not... Could, could you please stop pointing that gun at me? No murdering. No. No murdering. Thank you. Aren't you supposed to be fixing the sun or something? Uh, recalibrating radiation emissions, and yes. But I'm on a break. I just can't believe you've got all this crazy tech in here and you're making cheese. <laughs> you're just saying that because you've never had cheese. Cheese is nutritionally unnecessary. Heresy. You will be whistling a different tune after lunch tomorrow. Though, Kai, can you even eat food if you're, uh, um... A what? Never mind. I think that was rude of me. I'm sorry. Just ignore, like, 90% of the things I say. I don't understand how that is possible. And I'm not sure I want to eat something that came out of the inside of a goat. Earlier, you freaked out about the thought of eating something that had grown on a plant. And then you ate about 900 oranges. Give it a try. You won't be disappointed. Cool. I'll... <laughs> what now? I'm going to fix this. I'm going to bring back Ra to full health, and restore the ecosystem in the glasshouse, and develop a new embryonic daisy, and make Charlotte stop glitching, and find a way to reattach the communications pod that just broke away from the rest of the Cavatica. I'm going to fix everything. Support for the Girl in Space podcast is made possible by listeners like you. You can help keep the show going, get sweet merch, and access bonus episodes for as little as $2 a month when you become a patron on Patreon. Visit patreon.com slash girlinspace, all one word, to check out exclusive rewards for patrons and make your pledge. That's patreon, p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash girlinspace. For credits and a full transcription of this and other episodes of Girl in Space, please visit girlinspacepodcast.com. 
If you're interested in creative writing, be sure to check out my other show, Right Now. That's right, like W-R-I-T-E, because puns. Otherwise, thank you so much for listening to the Girl in Space podcast. It means so much.